In this lesson, we'll review some of the properties of series and how to determine whether series converge or diverge. So first, what is the definition of a convergent series and the definition of a divergent series? So given a series sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, this will converge if the sequence of partial sums, s sub n, where s sub n is equal to a1 plus up to a n. So this will converge if the sequence of partial sums converges. If the sequence of partial sums, s sub n, diverges, so does your summation. And so far that's kind of your only tool that you have. <clears throat> we also talked about a few specific kinds of series. So when does the geometric series converge and what is its sum? So this geometric series converges if the absolute value of r is in between 0 and 1 and it converges to a over 1 minus r. And just be aware that for that to be true, your sum must begin at n equals 0. And if it doesn't, you have to change it. Next, what is the test for divergence? So given a series, so a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, <clears throat> if the limit of the terms as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0, then you know that your series diverges. All right, lastly, give an example of a series whose terms approach zero as, we should actually say, as n goes to infinity, but the series is divergent. And the classical example is called the harmonic series, and the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. This diverges. but the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n e is equal to 0. So if your limit of your terms is equal to 0, really you just don't know what to do yet. I mean, it's possible that the series could converge, and it's possible that it could diverge. So at this point in time, that just, it is, it, and it really is never a conclusive thing. Verify that the following infinite series diverge and explain your reasoning. So for part A, this is a geometric series with r equal to 11 tenths, which is greater than 1, and so thus this diverges. In the second example, we can apply the test for divergence the limit as n goes to infinity of n over 2n plus 3 is equal to 1 half. And by the test for divergence, your series diverges. All right, verify that these series converge. So in part A, this is a geometric series with A equal to 1 and R equal to 5 6. And since 5 6 is less than 1, and we can conclude that this converges. And also notice our sum begins at 0. So this converges to A over 1 minus R. So 1 over 1 minus 5 6. So that's 1 divided by 1 sixth, which is 6.
Now the next series is a little bit more tricky because it begins at n equals 1, but because the absolute value of 3 fifths is in between 0 and 1, this series is going to converge. So first let's change our indices to be a sum from n equals 0 to infinity. 5 times negative 3 fifths to the power of n plus 1. <clears throat> Let's peel off a negative 3 fifths. So n equals 0 to infinity. Now negative well, 5 times negative 3 fifths times negative 3 fifths to the n, which is a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 3 times negative 3 fifths to the n. So this will equal a over 1 minus r. So negative 3 over 1, actually plus 3 fifths. So negative 3 divided by 8 fifths. Or negative 15 eighths. Now the other series you had examples of, other than geometric series, were telescoping series. So for this series we're going to find the partial fraction decomposition of 1 over n times n plus 1. So 1 over n times n plus 1 is equal to a over n plus b over n plus 1. Now multiplying by n times n plus 1 we'll have 1 equals a times n plus 1 plus b n so 1 equals n times a plus b plus a, and thus a will equal 1, and in which case b has to equal negative 1. <coughs> okay, so my series is the same thing as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And let's find an expression for the nth partial sum. So s sub n will equal 1 minus a half plus 1 half minus a third, etc. plus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, which is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And then the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n will equal 1, and thus <clears throat> the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1 is also equal to 1. In the next example, we're just given a list of numbers, and we're supposed to first convert this into a summation of some sorts. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. So I first began by writing this as 8 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 squared over 2 plus 3 to the third over 2 squared, 2 to the third. I'm seeing if there was any obvious pattern there. And nothing sort of came out at me, but what I noticed is that something must be canceling. So let's try this. 8 times 3 quarters to the 0. So it appears that this 8 is my a plus 8. And let's see if multiplying by 3 quarters to the first gives us the right second term. And it looks like it does. Plus another 8 times 3 quarters squared. And so if you square that 3, we're going to get 9. And the 4 squared makes 16. 8 over 16 reduces to 1 half. Plus 8 times 3 quarters to the third, etc. So that was a bit tricky. So this can be expressed as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity. 8 times 3 quarters to the n. <clears throat> and since the 3 quarters absolute values between 0 and 1, we can conclude that this is equal to 8 over 1 minus 3 fourths. So 8 divided by a quarter, which will equal 32.
Now it's tricky is to come up with patterns when stuff cancels like this. So what you can start off by thinking is that this, if you're if it's a geometric series and the first term is what you get when you plug in zero, that that's going to be your a right here. So that would be a good place to start. <clears throat> Next we have this series. So first of all, stuff is alternating, so we've got to have a negative in there someplace. And this one isn't as hard to figure out. It looks like my a is 3. So if we had 3 times negative 1 third to the 0, that would give us 3. Plus 3 times negative 1 third to the first, that would give us our negative 1. Plus 3 times negative 1 third squared, that's going to give us our 1 third plus 3 times negative 1 third to the third will give us 1 ninth, etc. So this is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3 times negative 1 third to the n. So since the absolute value of negative 1 third is in between 0 and 1, this will add up to 3 divided by 1 minus negative 1 third, or 3 divided by 4 thirds, which is the same thing as 3 times 3 quarters, or 9 quarters. Next we have some properties of infinite sums. So if we have a convergent series, and a, b, and c are real numbers, and the sum of the a sub n's is equal to capital A, and the sum of the b sub n's is capital B, then the following series converge to the indicated sums. So if you take this, the a sub n's and multiply them by a constant, you can kind of think that that constant can factor out. And you can have the constant times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n's. The second property says that if you add together the terms of two convergent series, that you can sort of <coughs> find the sum of the first series plus the sum of the second series and add the resulting things together, and the same is true for subtraction. So let's, let's use that to find the sum of the following series. So we are going to find the sum of this series by finding the sum from n equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to make that 0.7 into 7 tenths to the n, plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 9 tenths to the n. Now, both of these are geometric series with r in between 0 and 1. Now, the only problem is our series are begin at 1, so let's change the indices from 0 to infinity. That'll be now 7 tenths to the n plus 1, plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, 9 tenths to the n plus 1. <coughs> which is the same thing as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 7 tenths times 7 tenths to the n, plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 9 tenths times 9 tenths to the n. And applying our formulas for the sum of a geometric series, we'll have 7 tenths divided by 1 minus 7 tenths plus 9 tenths divided by 1 minus 9 tenths. <coughs> this first series, the first sum is 7 thirds, plus the second sum, which is actually 9. And when you get a common denominator and add those together, this sum adds to 34 thirds. Now with this next series, so we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 3 over n times n plus 1, plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 5 to the n. Now with this first one, that 3 can factor out, and we have 1 over n times n plus 1. <clears throat> and we already, in an earlier example, figured out that this series sums to 1. So our first part, we have 3 times 1. Now the second component is a geometric series. Let's change the indice to begin at 0 and at infinity. We'll have 1 fifth times 1 fifth to the n. 
So that will add to one-fifth times, or one-fifth actually, over times, one over one minus one-fifth. So we'll have three plus one-fifth times one minus one-fifth, which is one over four-fifths, so times five-quarters. So this is three plus one-quarter which is 3.25, or you could say, if you get a common denominator, that this is 13 quarters. Determine the convergence or divergence of the following series. So it isn't immediately obvious, but the first thing that I would check is check and see if the terms go to zero. If the terms don't go to zero, you can use the test for divergence to determine that the series diverges. So we're going to let f of x equal 3 to the x over x cubed. And let's find the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 to the x over x cubed. Now you can apply Lopi Tall's rule because you have an inf infin a limit of the form infinity over infinity. So the derivative of 3 to the x is ln 3 times 3 to the x over 3x squared, still infinity over infinity, so apply Lopitalis rule again, and we'll have ln3 times another ln3, so ln3 squared times 3 to the x over 6x, and one more time, x goes to infinity, we'll have ln of 3 cubed times 3 to the x over 6. And this limit is infinite. So thus, 3 to the n over n cubed goes to infinity, and so your series diverges. Next, we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of inverse tangent, or arctan. You, what you should remember is that the graph of arctan looks like this. It has horizontal asymptotes at pi halves and negative pi halves. So the limit as n goes to infinity of inverse tangent of n is equal to positive pi halves, which is not zero. So by the test for divergence, the series diverges. In this next example, we are going to find all values of x for which this series converges. For these particular values of x, write the sum of the series as a function of x. So what you should notice, first of all, is this is the same thing as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x over 3 to the n, which if we change our indices is the same thing as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x over 3 times x over 3 to the n. So this is a geometric series with r equal to x over 3. And this will converge if the absolute value of r is in between 0 and 1, or what you could say is that x over 3 is in between positive 1 and negative 1. Now multiplying by 3, that tells us that the x must be between positive 3 and negative 3. So those are the values of x for which this thing converges. And if x is in between those values, so if we have negative 3 less than x less than 3, then we're going to converge to x over 3 divided by 1 minus x over 3. So multiplying the numerator and denominator by 3, the, con the series will converge to x over 3 minus x. And notice that's only true if x is in this particular interval. Now here we have a sum from 0 to infinity, 5 times x minus 2 over 7 to the nth power. 
Now this will converge if the absolute value of x minus 2 over 7 is, in which is greater than 0 but less than 1, or x minus 2 over 7 is in between negative 1 and 1. Now solving that inequality by x, for x we have negative 7 is less than or equal to x minus 2, which is less than or equal to 7, or negative 5 is less than x, which is less than 9. So as long as x is between negative 5 and 9, this series will converge. And it will converge to, in this case, we have a is 5, so 5 over 1 minus x minus 2 over 7. Multiplying the numerator and denominator by 7, we'll have 35 over 7 minus x minus 2, which is 35 divided by 9 minus x. Our final examples will be a few examples of sequences or series to real life situations. So the total spending by tourists in a resort city is $300 million. Approximately 80% of that revenue is spent again in the resort city and of that amount 80% is spent in the same city and so on. So we want to write the geometric series that gives the total amount of spending generated by that $300 million. So first of all, of the $300 million, 80%, so 0.8, is spent in the city. And then additionally, of that 80% of $300 million, 80% of that, so times a 0.8 again, and etc. Next we'll have 300 million times 0.8 to the third, etc. So the total spending, we'll call that T, for us is the sum, we'll say from n equals 1 to infinity, of 300 times 0.8 to the n, which we can rewrite as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 300 times 0.8 and then times 0.8 to the n. Now since 0.8 is in between 0 and 1, we can use the geometric series formula to add up all of this stuff. So 300 times 0.8 is 240, so we'll have 240 over 1 minus 0 0.8, so that's 240 divided by 0.2, or 1,200 million. So the original spending of 300 million ends up to be 1,200 million of total spending that occurs within that community. Next, suppose you accept a job that pays a salary of $50,000 for the first year, and during the next 30 years you're guaranteed a 5% raise each year. What would your total compensation be over the 30-year period? And of course, we're not talking about taking out taxes or your expenses or anything. We're just saying how much money would you have earned. So, in your year, and here's your pay for that year. So, in year one, you make $50,000. In year two, you make $50,000 times 1.05. So, the 1 accommodates for the fact that you get your original salary plus the additional 5%. In year 3, you make $50,000 times 1.05 squared, etc. Until year 30, when your earnings are 50000 times 1.05 to the 29th. So your total earnings E can be expressed as a sum from n equals, we'll say, 0 to infinity of 50,000 times 1.05 to the n. Oops, not infinity. Whoops, oops, oops. That should actually say 29. And because you are counting at 0, you actually add up 30 years. Now, when we were proving, now this, if that had said infinity, this sum would diverge. But because we end at 29, we can use the formula we had for our partial sum back in the previous lesson. When we were proving that the geometric series converged, we found that the partial sum was equal to a 
over 1 minus r times 1 minus r to the n. I'm not going to make you memorize that, but you might need to use it on your homework. So your total earnings will be given by 50,000 divided by 1 minus 1.05 and then multiplied by 1 minus 1.05 to the power of 29. And that ends up being a grand total of 3116135 dollars and 60 cents. Which, if only you could save all your money, sounds like pretty awesome. It's too bad things like houses and buying groceries gets in the way of all that.